Super Cruise is complicated. I actually, I've done a video about how anemic Super Cruise actually is and how boring it is if you actually have control of the ship to fly in Super Cruise. Well, now that boredom has been brought front and center prominently on display for everybody to feel. And this is something I've already seen a couple of videos on YouTube about, basically saying that we should make the Apex taxis faster. Uh, no. We shouldn't make the Apex taxis faster. We should make Super Cruise acceleration and deceleration rates faster across the board. In essence, what needs to happen here is not a tweak to make Apex more bearable, it's a tweak to make Super Cruise more bearable. And I think that adjusting the acceleration deceleration rates is the easiest way to do it. Even if it's just as simple as doubling the acceleration deceleration rates, which would make it a little bit harder to arrive at stations, but we've got in-game aids to compensate for that. So if it needs to be a skill thing, I'm fine with it being a skill thing. That's the cheap fix. That's the easy thing that FDev could probably do before the game launches. But the more complicated thing that's probably a better solution is to revisit the Super Cruise mechanic in general and make a couple of other balance passes and tweaks. One of them, one of the big ones is that Super Cruise needs to feel more consequential than it does. And it should feel more integrated to the travel experience than it currently does. There are a couple of adjustments Super Cruise needs. The first is that acceleration deceleration should be increased to reduce travel times, but that acceleration deceleration multiplier should be based on the mass of your ship's hull. So smaller ships should be able to accelerate and decelerate faster than larger ships, and the rate at which you are stressing the frameshift drive should affect fuel consumption directly. As it stands right now, just being in supercruise has linear fuel consumption no matter what your throttle position or turn rates are. It doesn't affect heat, it doesn't affect fuel, it just is a fixed value. It shouldn't be that way. The amount of fuel that your ship consumes in Super Cruise should change based on how much you're stressing the ship, and the more you stress the frameshift drive, the more heat it should impart on the rest of your modules. I would like to see FDEV long-term go so far as having hazards in Super Cruise that go beyond just planets, like solar storms, flares, coronal mass ejections. They could even make up anomalies or other types of encounters that affect your super cruise performance and that could even rip you out of super cruise if you don't take steps to avoid them because making people do something in the game that is boring and offering them no tools to get around it is a really good way to piss people off you could be in the gunner's seat or in a sensor seat or in some other support seat watching your surroundings looking for potential threats and begging them oh side note I, this is a technology issue. I don't expect it to happen anytime soon, but Super Cruise and Hyperspace should be more connected than they are to each other. I would like to see it be possible long term in this game for a ship to transition from normal space to Super Cruise to Hyperspace seamlessly and to freely navigate across to all three forms of travel. So you might have to use Super Cruise and have no highway option available while you're in a system and then as soon as you get far away enough from the central star or across a certain speed threshold in Super Cruise, your ship just transitions to hyperspace. And then you freely navigate in hyperspace so that when you or as you approach a system, your ship slows down and hits Super Cruise and then you continue to approach slow down and eventually when you get close enough to a station or a body that it would mass lock you, you just phase back into normal space. It would improve a bunch of gameplay loops. It would make PvP a little bit more meaningful because you wouldn't just get ambushed by dropping into the central star. It would help the BGS by providing the possibility to enforce a secure perimeter around star systems. Because the, the thing we have right now where you just drop out in the center of a system isn't really fair to the attackers because you could just have a star swarming with targets and it isn't really fair to the defenders because it, it would be like trying to protect the Pentagon when bad guys can just teleport into the garden in the center of the building and make their way wherever they want. It's like, you, it's weird. And the tactics surrounding it make it really difficult to work with. So it would provide incentive for commanders to be patrolling the outskirts of the system and it would give them a way to effectively blockade systems. It would also change travel mechanics by making your jump range more an issue of fuel capacity than drive efficiency where optimized mass defines could define how quickly your ship accelerates. So, well, mass would still play an impact on it, but the idea would be that you want to have the lightest possible frame for the largest possible frame drive, frame shift drive that you can fit to make the ship 
move more quickly. And to potentially move longer distances with greater fuel efficiency if you're willing to throttle down and take your time. But freely navigating between star systems would mean that an anaconda could jump 200 light years in a shot, but rather than being a one jump thing, it might take you five, six minutes of flying like you're in super cruise, but between star systems in hyperspace. Those are my thoughts on night one, and I'll probably be following up with some more detailed thoughts here later on.